Coog's house. You know, it's been a long week with a lot of different, somewhat kind of depressing things to talk about in Houston Cougar world. So let's talk about something nice like Thread. You are Locked On Cougs, your daily podcast on the Houston Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Cougs, today's podcast about your Houston Cougars. I'm your host, Houston-born teacher and coach, Parker Andrew, here to break down all things Cougs. If you're a U of H fan or just a hater who can't stop by, please be sure to subscribe down below. That way we can lay on the Cougs into your news feed each and every day. We appreciate you making Locked On Cougs your first listen of the day. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. That's where you found us. It is so, so good to see you again. Um, anyway... We're trying to get to 1,750 subscribers, doing a giveaway every 250. Uh, Going to give something away. When we get there, we're just over 1,600. Um, people responded positively to the negative video yesterday. More on that in a second. Um, but with all of that said, uh, please hit subscribe to help us get to that 1,750 mark. And like and comment below down to let us know if you are in the contest. If you can't think of anything to say about talking about uniforms all day, um, tell us your favorite response you've seen to all of the, uh, what's called the crumbling around Texas Rangers Twitter. I, uh, because I'm very enthusiastically enjoying the Astro stuff right now. Um, all right. So what I'm looking at here is a couple different things going on with Houston Cougar football uniforms and jerseys and things of that nature. Um, admittedly, uh, this is somewhat of a, uh, bi-week topic, right? Houston's on a bye week so there's not a whole lot of games to talk about. But that's where we are. And the first thing is I want to talk about, like, why this matters. And I think it does. But the second thing I want to talk about is what the splits of the uniforms and things like that mean in a bigger picture. And then the final segment will be moving on from Texas Tech. Um, just ready to move on from that one. So first, let's talk about why these jerseys matter or why talking about uniforms, having a plethora of uniforms, why the threads in general matter. And I think what's interesting is, is that as you look across college football, there's kind of two modes of thought, right? You have like the Oklahoma's of the world or the Ohio State's of the world, the Michigan's of the world that have like a base, Notre Dame, the base jersey, LSU, uh, Alabama, the base jersey don't change, right? It just doesn't. They wear that every week. Oklahoma's kind of breaking them all with the occasional alternate, a creamy this with like pewter gray, charcoal gray that or whatever. Um, but by and large, historical programs, USC falls in that category. Um, programs with a lot of history that like tie themselves to that history by having had the same uniform since that history was made, right? You can watch a video of any USC quarterback from Matt Leinart, uh, to Caleb Williams, to any period of football played at USC. It's a crimson e maroon jersey with a yellow stripe on the shoulder, yellow pants, and a Trojan on the helmet, right? It's just it's always been that way. Uh, Alabama, it's always been maroon tops, white pants, uh, and the numbers on one side of the helmet, right? Like that's that's not anything crazy, not anything new. Notre Dame, they occasionally break out the green. It's not even once a year. They wear gold tops, uh, gold helmets, should say, um, blue tops and, and gold pants, uh, and very, very plain and simple. That's one way to do it. And frankly, if Houston had never changed their uniform, there'd be an argument to say that Houston should still wear the old Southwest Conference championship games uniforms and stuff like that, like from the early 80s and stuff like that would make a lot of sense. Frankly, there's an argument to say that maybe going back to a more modernized version of that might make some sense because it would be some sort of a hearkening back. Um, but the other way, the other direction this is going for schools with less tradition or schools that have had periods of time where traditions got broken, good or bad, right, is to go completely the opposite route. Right. When Baylor was at their best, they were in a different uniform every week. When Oregon came on the scene as a big national power, they wore a different uniform every week. Miami has very similar colors, but you'll watch and pay attention. They got alternate sets. They mix it up. 
They change it up often. It's not anything crazy. Now, they still wear a lot of the orange, right, because they want to harken back to the orange bold days, but they'll wear a black with the stuff that they got to. Um, they'll mix up the color pants. They'll change up the helmets, those kinds of things, right? Miami's interesting, too, because their history is not that old, but they do have history. It's a whole separate issue, issue I'm sure. It's a whole separate podcast we wanted to as well. I think it matters, and I'm. this is not just me, but I'm going to speak from the eye perspective. I think other people think it matters, too, to go down one of those two routes because it helps create an identity and a brand as you build out this program at a national level, right? As you look at recruiting, as you look at uh, fundraising and people donating money and having a big brand nationally, and frankly, as you look at recruiting academic students or, or students that are not playing on your football team uh, at a national level, having an identifier is key. And if that identifier is fresh threads that bring people into campus, if it's, you know, something like a different uniform every week, et cetera, it does harken back to this idea of like, well, people want to get those, but also this idea that, uh, frankly, your identity becomes innovation, creativity, newness, et cetera. That requires being innovative, creative, and new on the football field too. I'm not hitting here saying that it doesn't, but I do think that when you see things like the Love You Blue Houston Cougar uniforms that they wore this year, you see, for instance, how much that takes off, right? The creativity involved in that takes off like a wildfire, right? That's buzz. That's branding. That's marketing. That's built in. That's just because they wore a uniform that week, right? Now, you could go the Oregon route, and that's probably a lot, but and do something funky all the time, right? Wear the black jersey the next week. Right, break out a charcoal one time. Eh, why not go navy blue? They weren't they had navy as an accent color for a long time there in the mid-2000s. Go with that thing. Right. Do all kinds of mix-ups and, and see what sticks, what doesn't. Let your tradition be breaking tradition. Right. I think that's a very good way for a school like Houston that has history from once upon a time for sure, but has this window of the 90s and early 2000s where, you know. The rest of college football kind of left us in the dust. We had to pad to claw our way back to this point um, through the work of the Kevin Cobbs and the Case Keenums and all the things along the way. Um, I think it's worth looking at, though, that the brand for this program in terms of identity could be being one of those creative teams. Heck, honor the city in other ways besides just the Houston Oilers, right? Break out navy and orange because the Astros win the World Series. Break out or whatever, right? I'm not necessarily exactly that, you know, but do something crazy and different and make crazy and different your thing because of how well that thing went the first time. Houston led all kinds of national sports conversations in the opening weekend of college football because they did something different. And in a bye week, we're trying to find ways to stick out from our competition in terms of recruits, trying to find ways to get legs up with those recruits to continue to build up this program. Why isn't that the answer? Now, I do want to talk about the way the uniforms are split up this season because I think there's something worth noting. And what does that split up mean this season? But first, it's a weird weekend because there are college football games being played and none of them are Houston. And if you're looking to get to a game, let's talk for a minute about our buddies at game time. Now, Game time is a great place to find your tickets for all things going on in Houston and all things going on in college football, wherever you are. Game time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. You can see the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total upfront, so you know what you're getting and you get a great deal without any hidden fees. Buy tickets in seconds with just two taps on the app. They're obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. Game time has deals on tickets that right at the start of the big event and even an hour after it starts. It's a great place to find those last minute deals and seats. You can find exclusive flash deals and sponsor deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. All things happening all around Houston. Um, Make sure you can take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your 
first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account and redeem code Locked On College. L O C K E D C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Now, I say all this about uniforms to say that I am a person that enjoys talking about uniforms. Um, I tweet about them a lot of your social media person that follows me. Um, frankly, there'll be very soon some basketball talk to talk about. Uh, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. It could be very, very soon. We shall see. Uh, be paying attention to things that you see on the internet, folks. Now, I say that to say, though, that there's an interesting thing to go about this uniform. So I'm going to break down a couple ways that I looked at the uniforms online. For instance, the Houston Cougars, as I pulled up the visual, have worn three different colored jerseys this season. They wore the light blue in those. They were 1-0. and They've worn white, and in those, they are 0-2. And, and in the Cougar red, they are 1-1. One and one. We have not seen a black jersey this season. On the visual, if you're on uh, the YouTube page, I brought up last year's, but we have not seen any version of a black jersey yet this season interestingly enough the kind of trends carry over some into the pants as well now i'm a person that goes every single detail of the uniform but in those red white and blue pants obviously houston is one and oh and the kool-aid man red pants i call them kool-aid man red pants because when they wear the red tops and the red pants people on the line look like the kool-aid man they are oh and one in those red pants in white pants just plain white pants um or say just white pants of any kind i should say they are two and one um i think i have that correct make sure to double check about that but on the black pants they have not worn black pants yet this season so we don't know what that would be um and then if you carry that over into the next bit the helmets the script on the side also known as the one that they wore for the love you blue uniforms the script they're one and oh red helmets the houston cougars are zero and two this season White helmets, they're 2-0 and this season. Huh. Imagine that. Huh. Um, actually, red helmets, are we up to 0-3? Did I not update that? We're 0-3 now. Dang, 0-3 in the red helmets. Um, and then the Cougar script we have not seen yet this year. Right, Cougar script we have not seen yet this year. And that's interesting as well because I really like the script. I like the Houston script, the Cougar script. I like that font in general um, for the uniforms, things like that. Houston has not seen the Cougar one. Now, what that all amounts to is basically that the Houston Cougars have worn the white jerseys on the road. Uh, they've worn the red jerseys at home, with the exception being that UTSA game to open. When you look at their home and road splits, it's interesting to see that like the offense really kind of keeps pace and keeps even, right? Um, they're completing 64% of their passes at home, 63.5% of their passes on the road. They actually complete for more passing yards on the road. Um, they actually complete for more passing touchdowns on the road. Uh, they're rushing the ball slightly better at home. Uh, sorry, slightly better uh, on the road. I'm keeping a thing there. I'm sorry, I'm just speak, misspeaking because it's kind of late. Um I said to say that the offense might actually be better built for the road, which is helping skew those numbers, right? Uh, you would think it would be skewing those numbers a little bit that like the reds, this, the whites, that, the, this, that, the other thing. The deal is, is it's not quite shaking up to break out that way. Um, when you look at the defense, that's where you see a dramatic, dramatic difference. Houston's offense is again, probably a little bit better on the road. The defense is giving up 65.5% passing completions on the road compared to just 59% at home. They've given up three touchdowns per game through the air on the road. They've given up one touchdown a game through the air at home. Right? Rushing touchdowns. Right? Uh, rushing touchdowns are giving up three on the game per game on the road. They've given up one per game at home. Right? The at home numbers indicate that the defense plays much much better at home. Now, do am I tying that to some of these uniforms and helping helping that shade what color they pick or what uniform they pick or uh, what helmet they match or what jersey they match or what pants? Yes, I'm doing that somewhat facetiously because I think it's worth looking at, it's worth investigating, and 
frankly. It's things I like to keep track over the course of the year. For what it's worth, I'm also going to do is talk at some point this year about like when did Dana stop wearing visors and did that whole thing go, did his whole mojo go away when he stopped wearing the visor? Um, I think those things are fun. I think those things are somewhat, you know, fun connections to be making. But what I do think is important is that in looking at the win loss record in uniform, you can tie that to how they've done this season. Um, Houston, for what it's worth, only left the city of Houston so far to play at Texas Tech, right? They played Rice on a technical away game, and then that's also in the city of Houston, obviously, and then it went all the way to Texas Tech, which is still in the state of Texas. It's about as far as way you can get within the state of Texas, save for like El Paso, but it, it's also in the state of Texas, okay? Um, they get West Virginia at home, they get Texas at home, and then they go to Kansas State, right? That's a couple of what were proven to be tough opponents, it looks like, coming up at home and you know do you wear the feel good uniforms you find something to feel good in as you play those guys because you kind of need to find some mojo in one of those two games we're going on the road to kansas state now i think very highly of kansas state Uh, i think going to kansas state is going to be a tough game to go win uh, for a number of reasons most importantly i think that you know like they were a crazy long field goal away from being missouri and being undefeated and probably in the top 10 at this point instead Right, Kansas State is Kansas State. Um, Baylor's not a far road game. Cincinnati, Oklahoma State at home. Central Florida is a road game. It's an American Athletic Conference opponent, kind technically, or like an older one, so you kind of feel somewhat familiar. I say that to say that it's interesting to look at what these numbers are when you look at all of these different uniforms, and you can figure out what kinds of things or how would these numbers shift over the course of the season. Um I think it matters. I think it matters to the kids. The kids have things they like, things they don't. Um, frankly, they'll tell you that like the white ones fit this way, the red ones fit that way, the blue ones fit it that way or whatever, right? I think it's interesting that we haven't broken out a black jersey to a game yet. I think you could very well see it in the West Virginia game. Like you could very well see something funky in the Texas game as the only time we play Texas as a conference opponent in the foreseeable future. I think you could see something funky against Oklahoma State as the final home game of the season. I think it'll be interesting to see what they do in those games. I just, I think that this kind of stuff matters to kids that play, to get the recruits um, and all of that. And I think that, and I've said I think that a lot. I've said I think that a lot. Um, I think that the truth is, is that it may seem mon- like mundane details to some, but it's the th- kinds of things that tell a bigger story. The reason that some uniforms are, not good, don't look like they're good luck right now, like the all whites don't look like they're good luck right now, is because Houston's playing worse on the road, right? Um, the defense specifically is playing worse on the road, and connecting those dots makes for an interesting bit. Now, I want to talk about wrapping up tech and moving on from tech some, but first, as we're talking about uniforms, let's talk a little bit about pants because as I sit here in front of you, I'm sitting here in a pair of bird dogs. Bird dogs are great fitting pants. They look good and feel good too. Bird dogs are great for whatever you are doing. They have stretchy khaki looking fabrics for wearing at the front of a classroom like I do, wearing on the sideline coaching like I do, sitting here recording a podcast like I do. They're flexible and stretchy and breathable to walk around carrying your three and a half month old like I do. They do all the different things I need them to do. I can wear them to the gym. It's still hot outside. I can wear them to the pool. I can wear them to the grill. I can wear them to the tailgate. I wear them where ever i go and i'm not going to stand and show you my pants because that's kind of a weird thing to do but i'm going to tell you that you need to go to birddogs.com to get yourself some as well you can go to birddogs.com slash locked on college or into promo code locked on college check out for a free bird dogs water bottle with your order that's birddogs.com slash locked on college for a free water bottle at checkout you're going to want you're not going to want to take these bird dogs off we promise you Now, I said in the final segment, I want to wrap up and talk, talk about, I wanted to be done talking about Texas Tech. And I guess I could have opened with this because it feels kind of misconjoined here at the end, right? I get that. Um, I think the truth is, is that I've been putting off wrapping up talking about Texas Tech because I don't want to talk more about Texas Tech. And I admittedly, I'm supposed to be in more of a service role here as the podcast host where I talk about things that you guys want to listen to. You and I sit around and talk about Houston Cougars all the time. But I'm 
scrolling through most comments, checking Twitter, checking DMs, checking the, what do people want to be talking about? Because that's what I'm trying to give you. And so obviously, A, tell us in the comments down below what you want to talk about. Tell us in social media, find me at Pains 52 to talk about what you want to talk about. But truthfully, I get tired of belaboring the same point over and over again. It's kind of the same kind of thing where like people say, we should fire Dana. I'm not going to sit here for 30 minutes a day and talk about fire Dana find it over and over and over again for just 30 minutes of the same conversation every single day. That's not really um, an enjoyable experience, I think, for anyone, right? That doesn't do anything positive and help anyone out. And frankly, I've said before, if I were a betting man, whether I want it or not, whether you want it or not, I'd bet he's the coach in 2024. But, and I look at the Texas Tech game, and as I wrap it up, I did my deal where I watched it. I tried to watch it three times. I got frustrated in the third time and took a while to finish the third watch. Um, and I'm watching the TV angle, admittedly. I'm not watching the All-22, although if you get a link to the All-22 to the season, I'd like to go through some of those specific plays anyway. And I think the interesting thing that sticks out to me about the Tech game that is both encouraging and frustrating is that as a coach, I learned a long time ago when I was a freshman in high school, I was playing some varsity football, and um, I, I was told by a coach, you know, the film, I played very poorly. I was a freshman. Excuse me, I was a freshman. Um, and as a freshman, I played poorly, and I was playing, uh, I was a freshman, so I was playing left guard. And I was playing poorly in it, you know, the game that didn't go our way. And I felt pretty crappy about it. And the, our head football coach, a guy named George Kirk, uh, who has passed away, so don't mind saying his name because I only have good things to say about George Kirk. Um, he coached at Klein, actually, for a long time. That's not where I played, but that he coached there for a long time. Um, he he said, and the way I'm walking as a 14-year-old freshman, upset that I feel like I let the team... We played badly outside of me, too, but I feel like I let the team down. And he's like, you know, Parker, the funny thing about film is it's never as good... And this is the thing every coach says, but it was it struck with me in this particular moment. It's never as good as you want it to be. It's also never as bad as you think it is, right? Um, so you watch the Texas Tech game. You watch it a couple times. It's not going to look like a game that Houston, the more you pay attention to fine details when you know what's coming and those kinds of things. It's not like Houston made 75 mistakes. They didn't, right? It's also not like when things were rolling the offense and they scored 28 points the first half. It's not like they played mistake-free football then either. Right. Um, and so I think that's the balance that you have to look at. The same Houston State game, I think, is an example of the other side where you watch the whole thing, you're like, you know, they still made a lot of mistakes to score those points against Sam Houston State. That's the truth. That's the way it goes, right? Great teams still make mistakes as they play, and bad teams don't make good plays as they play. That's just the reality of football. And so, like, when I watch this game, um, I watch like the punt block. And truthfully, schematically, on the punt block, Houston's in all the right places. They're running what's called a spread for, a spread punt formation. Uh, in the time Dana's been here, especially with Coach Scott on the staff, they've run this every time. It's the first punt block for a touchdown they've had, right, where they didn't just get run over. I mean, they, they got, looked like they got schemed out of it. But when you do, they showed a replay from the rear view. So you show the shot from behind the punter. There are six players in the offense, or the punting team and six players in the defensive team in the box. Now the deep snapper has to uh, lift his head up for a count before he can block. So theoretically, he's like a late block. But theoretically, that's also six for six. I mean, six guys to block six guys. Well, the gunners take off, and they just start running in the field. The two guys, they're lined up next to the center, next to the snapper. They just take off downfield. The linebackers are going to go pursue the ball. And you're like, oh, my God, they didn't even block anybody. But when you watch the tape of every snap to that point, the way it's worked and the way it's effectively worked has been, yeah, they take off and run because the punt receiving team has to either keep up with them to keep them off the guy catching the punt or let their guy get popped in the face by a linebacker with a 60-yard running head start, right? Um, that's a decision that most people make where they say, you know, we're not going to let you hit our guy. Texas Tech brought the pressure. They sent all the guys that let the linebackers run free, Right. Gamble they made and it paid off. The other part of this is the wall, the personal protectors in front of the kick, the punter had three guys left at that point to block six. Now, could you say that that's too many? Yes. They also, as far as counts go, didn't look like to me that like they accounted for all six guys. And frankly, if you look at punts over the history of Texas Tech's previous 
the other time Texas Tech covered punts that game or teams that have played Houston thus far this year, not everyone lines up six over those five because it's so difficult to block a spread punt that you might as well make sure they don't hit your ball carrier, right? It was a weird thing where things worked out that one time. Two guys get through, one blocks it, one picks up for a touchdown. Boom. That's a big mistake that happens, and it sounds silly, and I don't mean to make light of how small a thing it was, but you can talk through like, you know, that wasn't that crazy a play. It's a formation that has, to this point, been very successful. Similarly enough, um, on the kickoff return, and, and I, I talked special teams to Ryan Monso tonight, so I'm sorry if on his show. So we're going to go check out Go Cougs later. Um, Ryan and I talked special teams. I think that's why this is where my head's at. But truthfully, the kickoff return for touchdown is an incredibly perfect kick. And truthfully, most referee crews call a holding very, very early, way, way, way back in the return. In either of those instances, Houston's got them pinned, right? The kick was three yards deep in the end zone in the corner. No one in the NFL returns that, let alone in college football. And the kid made what, if he doesn't make a touchdown type return, is called a boneheaded play when he takes it out. He takes it out, makes a couple guys miss, a couple guys hold, boom, touchdown, no, no flags on the field, right? Those two plays in general, and then I guess the, the field goal at the end of the half, and we're talking about special teams, is a missed field goal. That 17-point swing in the first half changes the game. Now, you could say it changed the game in a different way because you could say, like, well, Parker, they still would have scored. They didn't have to punt the whole first half. They didn't punt. Da, 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 da. And that's fine. You you can say what you want in the comments. That's not my – I mean, I'll read through it the best I can. But I will say, and I, I'm not going to read every single negative word, but I'll read and kind of get the gist, right? Um, I say that, though, that, like, it would have been a completely different game because Houston went into half down seven. They gave us 17 points in special teams. They very easily could have gone and set into halftime tied at 21, right? Because if T- if Tech had to like actually make drives for their touchdowns, they probably don't score as quickly, right? Because even when they were driving, they did not score as quickly, right? Um, Texas Tech had a seven-minute drive, had a nine-minute drive, had a eight-minute drive. Houston's one scored fast. Right. And so the idea that the game gets away from them or turns into a shootout early, I Houston's not winning shootouts right now. I, I'm, I'm afraid to say um, they might win like an, an Oklahoma State or a Baylor or a Cent, uh, Central Florida or a Cincinnati game in a shootout. They're having trouble with shootouts right now, especially on the road. Cause we talked about earlier their defense not playing great on the road. And had those couple of things happen differently, special teams being a third of the game that they are the whole thing could have toppled and been a whole lot different. Um, Now I'm approaching that relatively monotone or low energy, not just because it's late at night as I'm recording this, but because honestly, it's kind of upsetting. Uh, It's kind of depressing. It's kind of the kind of thing that beats you down a little bit as you look at it, because truthfully, there's a not so crazy different world where this team is at least three and two. There's a crazy, not so different world where this team is maybe four and one. But those aren't the worlds we live in. That's not where we are. We are who we are right now. You are who your record says you are. What's the Denny Green quote, the, the Coach Green quote? They are who we say they are. We let them off the hook, right? Um, now, we will talk more about basketball this week to get a little more positive. Basketball is coming. It's also a bye week, so we have some time to fit in. No game to preview for this weekend, right? But we are going to jump ahead early and talk some about West Virginia Um Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, kind of get ahead of the curve on those things because West Virginia games on a Thursday. Um, fun time getting ready for that one for sure. Um, fun time, fun time, fun time. All kinds of Dana Holgerson, West Virginia stories coming in that may be or may not be or talking about Dana Holgerson and his visors or lack thereof. Um, also, I am I said something about basketball jersey uniforms and that kind of stuff earlier in the episode. As soon as I get information on the confirmed and stuff on that we can talk some on those things that's all i got there though thank you all so much for tuning into lockdown cougars and my monotone self throughout the day today you can find me and talk all things houston cougars hopefully a little more energy at painsworth 512 p-a-i-n-s w-o-r-t-h 512 on twitter instagram and all your favorite social media handles for your second list of the day i'm going to recommend locked on astros because they mess around let us win the west 
Ghost Rose. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. Locked on Cougs, the private Locked on Podcast Network. And that means your team every day. Go Cougs.